Well, today we've finally got round to the fact we're going to do a Midland 3001. I haven't got any Midland 3001s in for repair, but I've got four scrap sets here which have come along in batches of junk over the years. We'll see whether we can get one of these to go. Now, this one at the bottom has got a back that's as rusty as it comes and a permanent lead coming out. Um, yeah, we'll put that on one side. This has got some wear on the case. It's been fitted with the wrong kind of socket, but you're probably aware that the the Maxcom um, power leads, which these take, because they're made by Maxon, um, are now rather few and far between, and they're quite expensive. So this is a possibility, but there's no speaker in it. I've not looked inside it, but I know there's no speaker. This one's been sprayed, been hand painted black, has the wrong knobs, and the channel selector is broken on it. That's had a two pin socket put on the back and looking at the dent in the back I think they've enlarged it with a chisel and it comes with a Eurosonic power mic and that will be going straight in the bin I'm not into power mics it's totally pointless I don't mind speech processor mics when people need that but those things Considering all these kind of radios have some type of speech processing, it seems pointless to add distortion for the radio to then remove it. And the final one has got a broken bezel, also no speaker. It's got the original socket, but it's got wires dangling out of it. So I think we're going to plug for that one and probably uh, whip the speaker out of that black one. Now I've got in another bag of stuff here a factory original Midland microphone. So we'll see whether that works on the microphone tester. So testing one two one two one two Wally, that's fine. It's much quicker than messing about with it on the radio and then finding it doesn't work. So we'll go for that. So that's something which coming is coming. Up, oops, that's something that's coming in a box of junk that actually works. Okay, having taken that apart now, we have actually got receive on. I'm on channel 20. Like I've said many times before, every time I buy a CV radio, the meter lamp's always out. There's no transmit. The radio isn't going in to transmit. Now we know the microphone works, and that's why we tested it using the microphone tester. What I have noticed is that the right hand switch was filter or out. Um, if I just zoom in, there's no wiring to the switch. So you've got a white wire there and nothing else. And moving along, you've got uh, something in the wire. So. We're not quite sure what somebody's done to that, so I'll look into the the wiring and I'll have a look at the circuit diagram and we'll see what somebody's done to it to um, stop it from transmitting. Okay, I'm back with you now having sorted out the no transmit problem. For some bizarre reason the transmit line went to that filter switch and then no further, so... Um, We'll be reinstating the filter, which is a bit of a tone control, later on, because the capacitor and the wiring needs putting back on that. Uh, in actual fact, the um, transmit line wire went down there. And um, so that's now got us back into transmit, and it is transmitting. <coughs> the um, VCO on these sets, I'm not going to cover it, because I have covered it before on this Maxon chassis. Um, basically, you've got a test point down there, which is clearly labelled test point and you're on your electronic voltmeter so you're something with a high impedance you're going to have it between test point and earth and you select channel 40 and then you adjust coil 116 which is 
still got the wax in this which is why I'm not going to adjust it on this radio unless there's a malfunction and you're looking at 2.5 volts on channel 40 then on receive you check that the VCO on channel 1 is between 2 and 4 volts so on transmit it's channel 40 two and a half volts for L116 and then you check on receive channel 1 is between 2 and 4 volts so the first uh, coil for us to do on this let's see what power it's doing for a start uh, 3.9 watts very slightly off frequency and I mean very slightly so the first one to adjust 107 is that one there and then we move to the second one which is there and the third one feels like it's going to break or is broken I'll just see whether it's um, just a bit stuck just a bit stuck and then the fourth one on transmit is there so we're now at 4.45 uh, watts and then the next one for transmit I'm changing the tools now to the yellow one that needs a bit of uh, heat to melt the wax in it. This is coil 111. That's 4.5 watts. And finally, coil 8. And we'll tune that down. For the required power which is now set up at just over the four so that's now set up checking on low power oh no these radios don't have low power do they that was one of the quirks I don't know how they got through the uh, specification but Plustronics did offer a, an attenuator as an option right so now we're going to be looking at the transmit power meter and the RF meter is RV103 so we'll press transmit meter swings across not quite at the 4 whether you can see that and if we adjust RV3 103 which is that one there fine and then we need to adjust the deviation which is 105 let's get the oscillator out let's see where that is Showing just over two and a half, so it, it looks in the right kind of area. <sighs> oh dear, but with the whistle test, it's well over the top. It went off the scale, and uh, we're on the five scale here. Went off the scale, so seems we don't want to be transmitting on three channels at once. Um, we'll sort that one out. It's RV105, and RV105 is the preset just there, which is right next to the one we've just done for the RF power meter <whistles> Wallow. 
just going to give that a spray because it's just got a little bit of uh, nastiness about it. As I said before, you never know whether these have come out of a smoking environment where it really plays havoc with these type of components. <whistles> Wallow. There we go. And that's now spot on where we want it to be at 2.5 kHz deviation. And finally, we just want to make sure it's on frequency and it's showing 2779116 which is neither here nor there we'll just pull that up because they do drop naturally with age and if I just adjust the tool which I now have done the trimmer capacitor is the one just down there you've got the synthesizer IC you've got the quartz reference crystal and the trimmer for that crystal is there so we'll just pull that up to 791.25. There we have it. That's now spot on on transmit. So I will now stop the video and we'll start again on the receive side of this radio.